Hello, it's Samantha. If you don't know, I was diagnosed originally with stage 4 breast cancer in 2019 and I had a reoccurrence uh, just this year in August 2023. I recently made a video talking about how I found out my cancer came back and I kind of just winged it. I like didn't plan out the video. Usually when I plan out a video, I think more about how it might come across to other people. But this time I just told the story. So there were some things in there that were confusing and that people had questions about and that I just didn't explain very well. So I'm responding to a few of those questions and also talking about another thing that was an interesting topic that showed up in the comments a few times. Since I'm responding directly to the stuff I said in that video, if you guys are confused at any point, you should go watch that video because it might make it make more sense. A lot of people have been asking if I'm back in Virginia now. Yes, I am back in Virginia now. We got back at the beginning of September. A lot of people have been asking about my treatment plan and it actually took me a while to figure out my full treatment plan. I'm going to make another video that goes more into depth into that. But basically when I came back, I got a PET scan to show where all the cancer was. I had a biopsy to make sure it was the same type of cancer with like the same receptors. It is still ER positive, estrogen receptor positive. The progesterone receptor came back negative and the HER2 was negative. Last time it was ER and PR positive, but they said it doesn't really matter as long as it's still hormone positive, HER2 negative. It's like the same thing that I'm gonna, like the same treatment that I'm gonna be getting. I had three rounds of radiation on the spot on my spine that the cancer had fractured and I didn't get anything else done. Uh, after that, I was basically trying to figure out what I was going to be doing for treatment and I had lots of different options. I'm very thankful to have lots of options. And basically, I was waiting to see what was going to work out best for me and my situation. And we found out now that I needed a port. You saw that video because I'm going to start getting chemo again. I will post another video with more details on that treatment. I'm just not quite sure how much of it I want to share right now, um, but I will be starting treatment next week and hopefully that helps. The surgery has stabilized my spine. It made that pain so, so much better, but I am feeling a lot of pain just from the cancer itself that is throughout my hips and my spine. I feel it a lot in my hips these days. So I'm hoping that the treatment plan that I'm starting next week will help with that pain. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I didn't post because I w didn't want to read mean comments. A lot of people were like, well, you're putting your info on the internet, so you're gonna get mean comments. Mean comments normally do not bother me and I don't care what people say. I leave the comments open on my channel. I never delete any comments. Um, actually, I've deleted like probably under five comments in my entire YouTube career on this channel um, because I like my comment section to be a place where people can discuss things even if I don't necessarily agree with it. But um, YouTube deletes comments so if people post especially rude comments YouTube goes in and removes those and also if people report other people's comments then those get removed. So. Mean comments, people were asking if I was, was deleting stuff. No, I don't really delete stuff very often. It's very rare that I delete anything, but you probably just didn't see a lot of mean comments because YouTube removes them. And most of my comments on that video were really, really nice. So that's probably also why you didn't see any mean ones, but there were a few mean ones in there. People were commenting that it's not mean to say that you shouldn't eat sugar or suggestions on how to help yourself if you have cancer. And those aren't the comments that I'm really talking about. I don't care about any comment that is a genuine recommendation from somebody that they think that this information will help me. I do not care about any of those comments. All those comments are nice. Those people are coming from the right place. They're trying to help me. I care about the people who are purposely being rude. And yes, those people exist. They, I do get them. And, but, but not very often. Like I said, like it doesn't happen often but I knew that I would get some. I'm not complaining about it. I just was giving you an explanation of why I didn't post that video sooner because I wanted to wait until I was in a place where I could read those mean comments and not feel bad about them. I mentioned in the video really briefly, like I didn't get an MRI because I didn't want to pay for it. That was just a joke, guys. Like if you have insurance, the cost of the MRI is not a concern. If I thought I needed an MRI, there was no reason where I wouldn't have been able to go get an MRI. I really just did not think that I needed an MRI. There was a lot of stuff I cut out of that video because the video was already super long, but basically 
I didn't think I need an MRI because there were lots of explanations for why my back was hurting. You know, I had just had a baby. I was constantly holding her. She likes to be held all the time. My muscles aren't used to that. I also just had a baby. The muscles in your body completely change around when that happens and your abs aren't as strong as they were and not using your abs as much can have a lot of strain on your back. There were so, so many reasons. And same with my hips. I literally read like the mom's group posts and like the what to expect app or whatever. And they, so many people are complaining about back pain and hip pain. I thought it was normal. My doctor thought it was normal. They recommended physical therapy and that was going to be the step that I took. And I really, really had no reason to believe that I needed an MRI until the physical therapy wouldn't work, which I never got to the physical therapy step. My back kind of like broke before that, but if I had tried the physical therapy and it didn't work, then I would have thought about getting an MRI. And the reason that I didn't want to go get one was because I get so many tests. You don't understand. Whenever a cancer patient says they have anything wrong with them, you're like, oh, I have a headache. They're like, brain MRI. And it's just ridiculous. I am so, I was so sick of having to get test after test after test and having everything come back normal and I just didn't really want to go get an MRI and also it's hard for me to get somebody to watch my daughter all the all you people are gonna like comment again like I know this isn't going to satisfy you people who commented because all you guys were like you're being selfish you should have taken care of yourself and gotten that MRI and now blah 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 this happened like I still have the cancer whether I got the MRI or not it's it's just it just did, wouldn't have, maybe I wouldn't have fractured my back in that instance, but it might have still happened anyway, just down the line, even if I already knew that there was cancer there. I just want to make it clear that there's no cost concerns with getting tests with my insurance, and I am fine. And everybody's like, oh, in my country, everything's free, and yeah, like, I know everything's free in certain countries, but other countries have other problems. I'm friends with a lot of cancer patients on Instagram that complain about separate issues and we pay for certain things over here yes it's true but we also can get things really quickly like i needed an mri some people can wait a month for an mri um i needed i got a biopsy my results c come back for the biopsy the next day instead of three weeks from then so there's you know pluses and minuses but there was no cost concern with me getting the mri no one can tell the amount of pain i'm in it's relative. I'm the only person that can tell. So when people on the internet are like, oh my gosh, my back hurts so much after having a baby, I'm like, oh yeah, my back hurts so much too. Like, how am I supposed to know that my pain that I'm feeling might be worse than what they're feeling? And it, it wasn't even necessarily worse than what they're feeling because you have no way of knowing what people's pain is. So I had no reason to think that I had cancer all throughout my spine. This is another one that's kind of funny. People thought I was calling my family out when I said they were all telling me about how their backs hurt at some point in their life. And I wasn't saying that to call them out. I was saying it to say that I was not explaining my pain well enough because everybody thought that it was like some other instance that they had in their life. But clearly like this was worse pain than what most people have experienced. Not all people because I had people in the comments saying like, oh, you're not the only one that's experienced bad back pain. I'm not saying I'm not the only one I'm not saying that I'm the only one who's experienced bad back pain. I know lots of people have. I just was saying that all 20 people that were in that house at that time came up to me and told me a story about how their back hurt at some point, relating it to my pain. And I don't think that all 20 people who were there at that point has, have experienced back pain to the degree that I was feeling. Like some of the people there probably had experienced bad back pain that was just as bad or maybe even worse as what I was feeling. I don't know. Like I said, you can't judge people's pain. That pain that I was feeling at that point was before the fracture even happened. So why was I feeling that much pain then? I have no idea. It, some of the pain that I was feeling in that moment was worse than the pain that I was feeling after I fractured. Sometimes. That's another thing that people commented about. I was describing 9 out of 10 pain. That was not consistent like all the time. That was at certain times when I did certain things I would feel 9 out of pain, 9 out of 10 excruciating pain, but it was not at all hours of the day that I was feeling 9 out of 10 pain. When I fractured my back, 
I was feeling very, very intense pain for a very long period of time. Maybe eight out of ten. I don't, I don't know. But it, but but feeling a large amount of pain for a longer period of time is way more painful in the long run than experiencing, you know, a short burst of like a ton of pain. Um, like my sister always explains, you know, stubbing your toe is worse than being in labor. Like when you stub your toe you experience a large amount of pain for a very short period of time but when you're in labor it goes on for longer so she's like oh stubbing your toe is higher on the pain scale than labor contractions i still don't really believe that because i still feel like the worst part of a labor contraction is worse than stubbing your toe but anyway that's what i'm talking about i was feeling i mean it was longer than stubbing your toe but i was feeling nine out of ten pain for not the entire day, just certain times of the day. People were like, oh, your family was probably trying to help you. Like, yeah, I know they were trying to help me. Like, I was taking into account all of their suggestions and I was trying them all. And people were giving me like advice on stretches to do and I couldn't do them. That's when I was kind of like, huh, maybe my pain is like worse than what all these people are thinking it is because they're giving me all these stretches to do and I actually can't do them like can't even get into the position to do them at all because it hurts so bad and I was sitting there like at first being like man I'm such a wimp I should just like do these stretches it'll help me feel better but like later on I was like you know like I can't even get into the position to do this stretch I can't even do it at all maybe I'm not explaining my pain correctly and also, my family is not the type to get offended, so my family is not going to be offended by me saying any of this on Gray's side of the family or my side of the family. Nobody gets offended very easily. Another thing that I knew I was going to get a lot of comments about, because I just saw it coming, you guys. People were asking if I regretted my decisions about treatment options in the past. Maybe I think that if I had made a decision differently in my previous treatment that the cancer wouldn't be back. So answer, do I regret any of my decisions? No, I do not regret any decision and I'm going to go through all of the ones that I can think of and explain why because people thought that that was interesting. First of all, I know I don't owe any of you guys any explanations, but I thought that this might be helpful and interesting for you guys because you guys said it would be interesting to know uh, why I don't regret any of my decisions. Man, I can't talk today. I also thought that it might help someone who's struggling to make a medical decision like this kind of feel better about the decisions that they're making. So the first decision in my cancer journey that I can really remember making that wasn't like, oh yeah, obviously I'm gonna do this, was whether to get a mastectomy or a lumpectomy. So I had the option to get a complete double mastectomy. So I only had cancer in the left breast um, and you know the lymph nodes and the rib, which is why it was stage four, but there was no cancer in my right breast at all, completely clear. I had the option to get a double mastectomy. The reasoning behind that was, oh, you won't have any more breast tissue left in your body for cancer to grow in. I chose to just get a lumpectomy on the left side. Reasoning behind my decision, I have another whole video on it, but basically my cancer was already stage four. I had a larger chance of cancer coming up anywhere in my body, not necessarily in the breast, so it didn't really make a difference that I was removing all the breast tissue because cancer had already spread to other places in my body, that rib, so I probably was going to have cancer show up somewhere else, not in the right breast. and cancer has not shown up in the right breast actually at all. It's in my bones. Basically, I chose lumpectomy and that was not like a crazy, crazy decision. Like some people look at it like it was a crazy decision. Like, oh my gosh, why wouldn't you do the most drastic option? My doctors were actually kind of like 50-50 either way. Like you, got, you decide what's best for you. And I do not regret that decision at all. Um, even though I've had cancer return, like I said, it's not in my right breast. Even if it was in my right breast, I would not regret that decision because how would I have known? How would I have known where the cancer was going to return? I made that decision and I stuck by it and I'm so glad. Also, I got to breastfeed my baby. I got radiation on the left side, so this breast was not able to be used for uh, breastfeeding at all because I didn't produce milk over there, but I used completely my right side and breastfed my baby for over nine months. When I start chemo next week, 
I'm going to have to stop breastfeeding, but I have breastfed her her entire life until now, and it has been an amazing experience, and I'm so, so glad I did it. I, I tell my husband all the time how happy I am that I got to breastfeed and how cool of an experience that was. So no, I do not regret that decision at all that I got a lumpectomy over a mastectomy. That decision I thought about for so, so long. I thought about it for so long until I was confident in my decision. It wasn't like I was just like, I don't want to get rid of both breasts. Let me get a lumpectomy. It wasn't like, oh, I woke up one day and decided. It was months of thinking about this, talking to people, talking to doctors, and making that decision. So let me talk about the decision that I know everyone's talking about, which was my decision to stop my hormone therapy and targeted therapy medications back in 2021, right before I got pregnant. So after I was NED on my scans, no evidence of disease, my scans were clear, I was still taking hormone therapy and a targeted therapy for two years because it's like a common thing that people with hormone positive breast cancer do as a preventative measure to stop cancer from returning. It was recommended to me to go on that medication for five years, but I stopped after two because the medication was so, so bad. It was, I was not tolerating it well at all. I have a whole video about this. So if you are interested in it, go ahead and watch that video. Because I am convinced that the people who are criticizing me for this haven't watched that video. Because while I understand you may have not made the same decision as me, you may have decided to keep going with the medicine if you were in my shoes. First of all, you never know because you don't know what you would decide unless you are in the situation yourself. But maybe you would have decided to keep going on the medicine. So whether or not you would have decided that, I don't understand how you still wouldn't be able to see my point of view. I'm not saying that it's a decision that everyone should make. It's not a decision that's right for everybody, but it was a decision that was right for me. And I think, I think it makes sense. Like, I think if you watch that video, you'll be like, oh, I can see why somebody would make that choice. Maybe you wouldn't make that choice, but you should be able to see why somebody might make that decision. Do I, do I regret coming off that medicine? No, I don't. And the reason, there's so many reasons. First of all, I never would have been able to have a baby if I was still on that medicine, and that baby is the best thing that's ever happened. And I get criticized a lot saying, why would you bring a baby into this world if you had cancer? And I just think it's the silliest argument ever. Um, people are like, your baby might grow up without a mom. And it's like, yeah, your baby might grow up without a mom anyway. Like, anyone can die for any reason. Your baby could be left without a mom. And they're like, oh, it's gonna be a whole source of trauma for her if she never, if she didn't know her mom very well. And I'm like, I kind of feel bad for the people who are commenting this because you guys must not grow up in a family that is as loving as the family that I grew up in. And it's sad because I just, you're suggesting basically that it's better for her not to be alive than to not have a mother. And that's just the craziest, weirdest thing. I can't even comprehend how someone would believe that because this kid has so many people who love her. She has grandparents, she has aunts and uncles, she has cousins, she has her dad, great grandparents. I mean, there are so many people who love this baby right now. She's surrounded by love and she is cared for by so many people right now because I can't do everything for her and I'm here right now and I just it it blows my mind that someone would suggest it's better that she wouldn't be alive than to not have me in her life because even if she didn't have me in her life she has all these people there loving her also having cancer it makes you realize that you need to live your life um, you can't just live your life in fear of cancer returning forever or else you'll never do anything. You'll be like, oh, like, I don't want to um, buy a house because that's like a bad money decision. And then, you know, uh, what if I spend money on that and then like my kids don't have money to use after I die or my husbands don't have money to use after I die or I shouldn't go on that vacation because what if I need that money for like cancer treatment? And it's just like, 
you can't think like that for every single thing, especially, especially if you're no evidence of disease like I was. You have to go and live your life while you're here and having a baby was great and I'm glad that I did it and I had no way of knowing that my cancer would return. There are studies out there that show that getting pregnant after breast cancer has no effect on whether cancer returns or not. There's a huge study out there going on about this. It's called the, I think it's called positive trial or something like that. And you can look it up on the internet and it basically shows hormone positive breast cancer, the type of breast cancer that I had. People took a break after two years of hormone therapy, had a baby, and those people did not have a higher likelihood of having cancer return. I wasn't even putting myself really at risk by having the baby. My doctor was saying, this is actually good. Breastfeeding is shown to be good. The fact that everyone like criticizes me for having a baby is wild to me. Other reasons why I don't regret my decisions is I never made uninformed decisions. These were decisions that were thought about for so long. The mastectomy, lumpectomy thing, I didn't really have that much time to think about it. I had like a few months. I took all of those months to think about it. This decision about coming off the targeted therapy, hormone therapy stuff was a two year long decision of me feeling awful every day for two years and feeling so bad and realizing, hey, Maybe, maybe if I come off this medicine, I'll have a shorter life, but at least I'll be able to live it and feel good. That was part of my reason. It wasn't all of it. You can go watch the video. But the other reason why I don't regret my decisions is because the decisions weren't just about me. It was also about my husband. It was also about my family. Everyone was taken into consideration. It wasn't just, oh man, I feel so bad. I'm just gonna, you know, go off this medicine and and whatever, it wasn't, it wasn't really a selfish decision. It was a decision that, like I said, we talked about for so, so, so long. Me being at my best helps me, I don't know how to say this, helps me be a better person to other people in my life. Not to say that I was like being a jerk to everybody, but like I wasn't feeling myself. And me feeling myself, I feel like, makes my relationships with other people better. The fact that cancer can still come back either way should just be enough of a reason. I don't know why that never crosses anyone's mind. First of all, you don't even know if that medicine made my cancer come back. The side effects of every cancer medication, one of the side effects is cancer. So like, you know, being on that hormone therapy and targeted therapy could have been the reason that my cancer came back. Me going off of it could have been the reason my cancer came back. If I was still on that medication right now, my cancer, we could be in this exact same situation. I could still have had my cancer return. Maybe if I was on that medication, I wouldn't have cancer right now, but there is absolutely no way to know that. So do I regret my decision? No, because how, like, how could I criticize my past decision? Because I have absolutely no, no way of knowing if my cancer would be back or not. And plus, I have felt amazing since being off this medicine. I felt so good. I got to enjoy like two years of feeling myself again before I now have to go on more cancer medicine. I got to enjoy so much time with my husband, traveling, having a baby, traveling with the baby, and doing so many things that if I was on that medicine still, I would have never gotten to do. And if I die from cancer, I would have never gotten to do those things. And like I said, I could still have died from cancer either way, even if I was still on the medicine. And so I would have never gotten to experience those things. So like, I am just grateful for the experiences that I've had. So that's why I don't, just don't regret any decisions because every decision that I have ever made in my life had, has led me to something else. And I just, I can't imagine my life being any other way because you never know how it could have been. You never know what a different decision could have affected. Some people were saying my attitude was so cocky, like responding to comments being like, yeah, I know I made the de best decision for me. And it's actually really funny because anyone in real life, no one has ever described me as cocky before, but it's true. Like I, I am being cocky and I'm, purposefully kind of trying to be like 
I know that's like a weird thing to say, but like I am, I have to be confident in my decisions basically. Not, not necessarily co cocky, but I have to be confident in my decisions because if I'm not confident in my decisions, then I'm going to spend my entire life being like, oh no, what if I did this instead? And so part of having cancer and part of making these decisions is you have to be confident in them and you have to make yourself confident in them. Because if you're not, you're just, you're just going to have depression, basically. Like that's the only way I can describe it. You're just going to constantly be thinking, what if I did this? What if I did this? And you can't think like that because, because life is amazing and you want to live it and you want to be able to do all these things without regrets. So yeah, I, I have been kind of cocky. I have been like, no, this was the best decision for me. Like I know for sure, because in my mind, I have to think that way or else I won't be able to enjoy my life. So that's all about that. Um, like I said, go watch the video of why I stopped my medicine. If you watch that and you still don't understand why I stopped my medicine, then I guess I have nothing else for you. Uh, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree. Um, you're just gonna have to think I'm messed up, horrible, selfish person, and that's fine. Like, you don't know me in real life, so that's okay. People have asked if I regret not getting an MRI sooner. And that's a very interesting question because I thought that I was going to get a PET scan in March when I came back to Virginia and I met with my oncologist and I kind of thought that I was going to be getting a PET scan at that appointment, but we ended up not doing it because he was like, oh, you're not having any issues. Because at that point I wasn't really having any unexplainable pain. The only pain that I was having was some pain in my neck from holding my baby. Um, and my baby was a lot lighter then, so like as she got heavier, it made sense to me that my back was hurting. But anyway, I wasn't having pain then or anything, so he was like, you know what, I don't think you need a PET scan. So I didn't get a PET scan. And I have thought, huh, what if I had just gotten a PET scan in March? Would we have caught any of this? And then I think there would have been so many experiences that I would have missed out on if we had found this sooner. And I know that that's like a little weird to say, but if we had found this sooner, I don't even know what the last year would have looked like. Um, would we have even gone back to Alaska? Would I be living here in Virginia getting treatment while my husband was in Alaska? I don't know, but there's so many things we would have missed out on. There were so many trips we took, memories we made with um, our baby, and I constantly tell my husband that this, this, that last year in Alaska was just so special that whatever happens, it doesn't matter because that year was so, so special to me. I seriously, like, I don't think I would trade it for anything. Like, some of the best memories ever. And I'm always gonna look back on that year and be like, this was amazing. And if you have the opportunity to, like if you're newly married and you have the opportunity to go somewhere a little bit crazy, which this wasn't even like that crazy because like tons of people live there. Like we were in a populated area. If you have an opportunity to go somewhere crazy and have an adventure with your new spouse, like totally take it. Like I'm so thankful that we had that opportunity. And if I'd gotten an MRI sooner, I just, I would have missed out on a lot of stuff. It just, it just would have happened. And, you know, maybe I wouldn't have broken my back. Um, maybe we'd have found stuff sooner, but who's to say like how much that would have actually helped in the grand scheme of things. Finding the cancer sooner, treatment would have started sooner, but who knows like how much time, like how much of a difference that time would have made. And there's no way to know. I just don't think that there's a point regretting decisions like that. Um, because you can't go back in time. And the only thing that you can do is think about the things that have happened because of the decisions that you have made and because of the way your life has panned out. And that's I, that's the only way that I can see to live life. Like even if you don't have cancer, that's the only way I can see to live life or else you're just gonna constantly just be feeling bad about yourself and wondering what would have happened. and. That's no way to live. Like you should live in the moment and enjoy the things that you have because you never know when things are gonna be taken away from you. You never know when 
you're not going to be able to hold your baby and rock her to sleep that night. Um, probably like the hardest thing that I'm dealing with right now. That's all I have on that, I guess. Uh, I hope that that, I didn't really plan this video out very much either. I kind of just answered questions. So I hope, I hope, hope that, um, I made sense in my explanations and I hope that it was somewhat interesting too that you're not just sitting here bored listening to me ramble on and on about my life. Probably when this video is out, my treatment will have already started. So the week of October 16th. So I'll be starting one of the days in that week. Like I said, I'm trying to decide how much information I wanna share, but I will be making some sort of video explaining uh, my treatment and what I'm going to be doing. But we do have a plan and I am very hopeful that it'll work. My doctors are very encouraged um, by this plan that we have chosen. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to follow along with my journey. And yeah, that's all. Bye.